Every week we talk about the foundations of any good planting is color, texture, and form. Huh, like? Amen, brother. Mm-hmm. I tell you, it, whether it's a combo pot or your, your new landscape that you're working on, it's color. So let's talk about just color. We'll isolate that for a moment. Your house, okay, is the canvas and the plants are the paint. So if your house is cream-colored siding or gray, brick stucco, you know, what goes good together? So on those types of, of houses, for instance, red and burgundy and blues go good together. So we're talking about red and burgundy plants. You know, write this down. I hope you got your pencil out. Dwarf barberry. Sand cherry. Japanese maple. Oh, Japanese maple. One of the favorites. Right? Uh, physiocarpus. Wajilia. Wajilia, yeah. Beautiful plant. All of those are great red plants, burgundy plants. A lot of them have burgundy in the name. Um, the, the dwarf barberry now that some of like the older varieties were considered invasive by well-meaning politicians. Who wanted to show they were doing stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's another show. <laughs> so I think they record over in the hallway. Oh, no. Yeah, back here. <laughs> over here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, it's important to, to get good plants and that it's always changing. And, and again, the newer varieties are um, sterile so that they don't produce seed and they don't, you know, end up being... Uh, I guess repopulate the countryside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, if you're looking for blue, one of the best blues are the dwarf blue spruce. There are lots of blue junipers, but be careful. You got to make sure of how fast they grow because there are some dwarf junipers, like for instance, a blue star juniper that grows slow, but then there's blue head side juniper that is like, it'll be gigantic before you know it. So make sure that you're paying attention to the tags and the descriptions. Blue fescue, blue atlas cedar, both weeping and the upright. Now, the upright one is going to get big. That would be right, more of a corner plant. And that the weeping variety is going to be something where it's kind of a, it's a show if plant. Look at me. Yeah. 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 It's like, I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm impressed. Dark greens. Dark greens and gold. Chartreuse. A lot of times the dark green plants are like the frame of the pictures or of a painting. That the frame is not supposed to stand out. It's the painting that it brings forth. So the dark greens are similar to that, where the dark greens are the frame to make the other plants stand out. So just keep that in mind. So some dark green plants, mugo pines. Both mugo pines give two different things, right? Well, one is the color, but it's also the texture. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hinoki cypress. And that there are different types of Hinoki cypress. So make sure that you're reading your tags and that you talk to your, your salesperson at your garden center, at your local independent garden center. Okay? They will know the answer. Is this a dwarf variety? Is this something that gets big? Because there are, there are varieties that look similar where one doesn't get more than like two or three feet and the other one gets to be six to 10. So you got to make sure that you're buying the right kind because it's the right plant in the right spot. Japanese holly, different shapes, mounding small shapes. Like I was talking about like how the 18 inch windows, right? You can use Hellerai holly in that instance. But then there's other varieties where there's Hetsai and there's other types of of um, Japanese holly and and including in that are those real narrow that we can't keep in stock it seems like sky pencils pencils, right where they're they're like columnar little you know they they have their place okay getting a little overused as far as I'm concerned but right plant right spot Uh, cephalotaxis what's the best thing about cephalotaxis Julio this is a quiz Cephalotaxis. You know, their um, the best part is they are not eaten by the deer. Right. Yeah. 
that deer don't eat it. Where your regular taxes, like your older varieties, like where Pet's Eye and uh, Hatfield and, and the old varieties, the Densiforma, those taxes or ewes, uh, they are eaten up by deer. Actually, I have one that's at the head. It's real door fried. Yeah. It like, oh yeah, it looks like, you know, I saw this family of deer, they come which in. again, it's, I'm still like, I'm still in the how cool stage of deer, but this family of deer ate my cephalotaxis. Not cephalotaxis. They ate my, my dwarf uh, taxis. Yeah. What are you going to do? Don't fear the shears. <laughs> Don't fear the deers. Fears. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they pruned it a little. <laughs> but cephalotax is, is a yeah. real good green. Blue holly. Blue holly is not necessarily blue, but it's a really, 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 really dark green or a dark blue so dark that it looks green. Um, again, there's so many other chartreuse and gold. Gold thread cypress, golden barberry, gold spirea. Different ferns, variegated liriope, different color and texture. All right. Now, the next thing is you got to break up those things. You want to break up textures. And and what would you use to break up some texture, Julio? Yeah, you have grasses, which are really great. You know, they soften uh, your landscape up a little bit there, too. That's right. And there's dwarf ones and there's yeah. tall ones oh. that get to be oh. as big as six feet. And there's yeah. some like the, the, the oh. Hamlin varieties that are only about two, two feet. feet. And they have different looks to them, like where they go dormant, but they also have foxtails or they have different types of, of fruit on it. And I love um, the, the Penicetum varieties because when they have their, uh, their, their, their foxtail out, it dances in the wind. It's Gosh. like yeah. when you get a breeze, it kind of just jiggles. You know? it, it's a great, great way to break it up. If you like grasses but don't like the you know them to be too big, day lilies are a perfect thing. Yeah, another one. Ferns, dwarf conifers, hookera. Hookera, yeah. And another texture, hydrangeas. Like like we're talking about the blue and the pink and the big leaf hydrangeas. They have that big leaf, and so that gives a different texture to it than would some of the other varieties that have smaller leaves or something like that. So another it's a great one. Um how about flowering plants and flowering times? Late winter, early spring, so January through March, viburnums, camellias, witch hazel. Yeah. We're talking about early spring, March to April, PJMs, caria, forsythia, other types of viburnum. Now, PJM, by the way, is like a cross between a rhododendron and azalea. Yeah, they're pretty. Um, right? Pieris, another one. Uh, Mid spring, April and May. Azaleas, sand cherries, quince. Quint, oh, what a beautiful plant. Yeah, I forgot about quince, didn't yeah. you? Quince, uh, the, and they worked on new colors to where it's yeah. like a, Orange. it's almost like a peachy color. Yeah. Uh, rhododendrons, dutsia, lilac. Late spring, mop hydrangeas, that, like we were just talking about, breaking up textures, roses, spirea. Well, was it? Roses, by the way. Don't, don't turn your, up, uh, your nose up at roses. Roses are the one plant that will bloom all summer, come back every year. So it's, um, you know, from start to finish that they're, they're going to be in bloom. They are going to need to get a little bit of a spraying now and then. But for what it gives you, it's worth just, you know, spraying it every couple of weeks and keeping it clean. Potentilla? Yeah. I'm not a fan. Yeah. St. John's wort, I am. Beautiful. They look like giant buttercups. Uh, Abelia, fan. Not only that, it tracks hummingbirds. Summertime. Got roses again, but Leah, okay, but Leah's uh, the, the pugsters are still pugsters my favorite. Are Spireas, uh, panicle hydrangeas, the white, the white ones that are that look so great, mm-hmm. um, and that they're now, and that they they not only look great when they're in flower, but they also look great when they go dry and they're on the plant. Oh, so yeah. so it has a it fades from like a white to. A you know, some go like deep red, some pink. Pinkish. Yeah. So that's another type of hydrangea that flowers at a different time than than your macrophylla types. All right, so here's some tips. Tallest things on the corner. No soldiers. <laughs> soldiers. No soldiers. <laughs> no soldiers by the door. Yeah, yeah. You don't want sentries out there that are you know real tall things by the doors. It's like, uh oh, look, it's ten soldiers are there. 
I remember the, yeah, we, had, you, we had that. We had that in my house. I, I, <laughs> at one point, my, my father did that. This <laughs> guy's right. So, <laughs> but where, you know, the shortest things should be by the door because the whole point of the landscape is to emphasize the entrance. Again, avoid the soldier thing. All right. You can have plants that are taller, but not. Not like perfectly sheared, uh, you know, Alberta spruce. I mean, gosh. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> break up your plantings with perennials. Uh, you, with herbaceous perennials, you get a different look and a different feel. Um, and don't use too many different plants. Like, like you don't want it to make it look like your your garden center threw up at your doorstep. <laughs> you you yeah, want to do just keep it pretty simple because you want to have reoccurring themes of color, texture, and form throughout your landscape so that your corners match your other corners and that as it comes in towards the door you get some you know you can match texture you can match color you can match identical plants monty don he's a, you're a big fan of monty don right oh, yeah corners world yeah. yeah he's great yeah no landscape needs more than seven different plants that's what he said and he does a lot of big landscapes <laughs> uh rule of threes you know Plant clusters of threes and that where you keep them, you know, you may have instead of having, you know, where one plant would be, you put a cluster of three, like say liriope, for instance, um, variegated liriope type of grass that gets purple flower. You know, you put three of them in and that that may take up a cluster that's maybe three by three or or, because it's a smaller plant. But then you want to do some of the other things like on the end of the landscape like on the corner where you've got a big a big plant you can put in a cluster of three different other plants that that maybe you know take up an area that's six by six um so again it, it's rules of three and repeat themes and colors through the landscape we just said mentioned that so again it's it's going to to have that same feel that it matches from one corner to the other um it will depend on the landscape of the and the I'm sorry, the house that you're dealing with. But fall is for planting, folks. But spring is for selection. Honestly, as a businessman, I have absolutely no incentive to bring in fall plants like I used to because everyone expects them to be 50% off. I hate it. And unfortunately, it's that the public has been trained and that you're going to get the bigger selection in spring because I actually can, you know, I, I mean, I can, can make money. My, my you know, our, our people can, uh, you know, there's, we meet payroll. We do all this other rat. We can't survive at 50% off. Okay. Unless it's a fake 50% off. There are some guys doing that, right. you know, it's, oh, it's a hundred dollars. It's like, it's $50 this week. It's like, well, anyway, I just saw that plant for $50 at bloomers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, oh no, but ours are 50% off. Uh, you need to be pretty shrewd. Um, but honestly, I think that the industry needs to reevaluate. Um, I would rather bring in and have two seasons. You know, by gosh, it's the fall is the best time to plant, right? So why don't I have the best selection now? Ah, uh, brother. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's going to work. Just, not going to work. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's industry has its own thing. That's right. And always, always, always design with full-grown plants in mind and consider shearing and the maintenance issues you'll have if you don't.